Honors Geometry, Note Section 15.2, Volume of Cylinders and Points. To find the volume of a cylinder, it is the same formula that you would use to find the volume of a prism. You take the area of the base times the height. Now, it just so happens that every cylinder has a base that's a circle. How do you find the area of a circle? Well, it's pi r squared. You then multiply that by the height. Keep in mind, the height has to be perpendicular to the base. If you were to take this, the lateral area of this uh, cylinder, and you were to cut it and then spread it out, you would get a rectangle. If you visualize this rectangle, if you wrapped it around this, you would see that it forms this circular shape. Cavalieri's principle. Bonaventura Francesca Cavalieri, 1598 to 1647. If the area of the cross section of two solids by any plane parallel to a given plane are invariably equal, then the two solids have the same volume. Let me try to illustrate what the heck that's saying. Here we have a bunch of crackers. <laughs> to find the volume of this stack of crackers, we would take the area of the base, which is a circle, we would multiply it by the height. Notice the height is going to be perpendicular to this base. Imagine that this oval here is a cracker. Notice the height that I have from the bottom cracker to the top cracker is the same as that we had over yonder. If I staggered the crackers so that the crackers were like a leaning tower of crackers, <laughs> okay. then we would have this shape. Does that change the volume? Well, if you think about a stack of crackers, no matter how you orientate those crackers, they're all going to be the same volume, no matter how you do it. Notice the base hasn't changed, neither has the height, assuming that you understand the height is perpendicular to the base. This blue segment is not the height. Height is perpendicular to the base. Cavalieri's principle is saying that the stack of crackers, whether it be a right cylinder or a cylinder that is tilted like this, it's going to have the same volume. That can be seen with a stack of CDs, which you probably don't know what that is. Here is a cylinder. It's a right cylinder, and here it's slanted. It's the same height in each case, so they're going to have the same volume. Take a stack of money, and you were to spread it out. It's going to have the same volume. Volume of a cone. The volume of a cone is a third of the base times height. You know what that means? Let me tell you what it means. If you were to take a cylinder and a cone that had the same dimensions, meaning that the circle that you see here on the bottom of the cylinder had the same radius as the circle that was on the bottom of the cone, and you were to fill the cone up with liquid, and dump it into this, it would fill up exactly one third of this. Now I think this is important to see this visual. Third of it's full, two thirds are not going to be full. That's why this formula here makes sense. The volume of a cone is the third of the volume of a cylinder. because It's going to take up a third of the space. Let's do some examples. Determine the volume of the following. Well, the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base times the height. The base, which is the circle, is pi r squared. The radius here is 4. That's going to be 16 pi. So the base is 16 pi. The height we can see here is 5. 16 times 5 is 80, so we got 80 pi, the units is centimeters, so it's cubic centimeters. We can fit 80 pi cubes 
that are one by one by one centimeter inside of this little fella. Number eight, I gotta find the volume of this cone. The volume of a cone is a third of the area of the base times the height. The base in this case is a circle. Area of a circle is pi r squared. The radius is three. Three squared is niner. That's trucker talk for nine. So the area of the base is nine pi. The height is perpendicular to the base, so that's eight. A third of nine is three. Three times eight is 24. This is 24 pi cubic centimeters. Got a few more. I don't know why this, <laughs> it's funny. I don't know why this started with number seven. That's ridiculous. Number nine, question mark? To find the volume of a cylinder, it's the area of the base times the height. The base is a circle in this case, which is pi r squared. If the diameter is five, the radius is half of that, which is 2.5. I'm going to elect to write that as five divided by two because squaring five divided by two is easier for me. That's 25 fourths. When you square a fraction, you square the top and you square the bottom. So the volume is 25 fourths pi times the height, and we don't know the height. The height's perpendicular to the base, so it's the same as this side here. Well, we'll check this out. If this circle is five, has a diameter, then this one here also has five. Hopefully you can see that we have this right triangle. It's a Pythagorean triple. It's a five, 12, 13 Pythagorean triple, which means the height of this is 12. You can do some cross canceling to simplify this. Four goes into 12 three times. 3 times 25 is 75, so we get 75 pi cubic centimeters. That's the volume of this cylinder. Number 10. The volume of a cone is a third of the volume of a cylinder. So that's a third of the area of the base times the height. Area of the base, that's a circle, pi r squared. R in this case, it appears to be three. So we're gonna get nan pa for the area of the base. We don't know the height, unfortunately. Well, let's see if we can figure out how to find this height. If I draw this height, it's going to cut that 120 in half, make this 60. The height's perpendicular to the base. It's going to make this 30 over here. This picture is clearly not drawn to scale. So then, if I look, we have a special right triangle. We have a 30, 60, 90. Opposite 60, well, that's the short leg times the square root of 3, which means the short leg, if we divide both sides by the square root of 3, It's going to be 3 divided by the square root of 3 is the short leg. If you rationalize your denominator, if you multiply the top and bottom by square root of 3, you're going to get 3 square roots of 3 over 3, which means the 3's cancel. You get the short leg is the square root of 3. In this case, that short leg we're referring to is opposite 30. That's what the height is. So the height is the square root of three. 
Multiplying this stuff together, a third of 9 is 3 times the square root of 3 times pi in our units is cubic centimeters. It's 30, 60, 90 stuff. It's not going to go away. If you haven't learned it yet, please go back in your notes, chapter 8, maybe chapter 9, relearn it. Whoa, what is going on here? This is like a two-tiered cake with a hole in the middle. It's important to note that this part right here is missing. It is missing from this. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you the big plan, then we'll do the small parts. To find the volume of this solid, we're going to take the volume of figure 1. We'll call this figure 1 here. And then add to that the volume of figure 2. We'll call this figure 2. Then we're going to subtract from that the volume of figure 3. We'll call this purple part figure 3. That shouldn't be too difficult. Ugh, I lost control. Son of a... Son of a loss of control. Got a rebooter. All right, so let's find these volumes. The first base, that's going to be a circle with the radius half of 14, which I like to call seven. That's 49 pi. Second base, that's gonna be of this shape here, has a diameter of 10, so it has a radius of five. And the third base has a diameter of 2. So it has a radius of 1. So to find these volumes, shape 1, we're going to take the area of its base times its height. Volume of shape 2, we're going to take the area of its base times its height. And then for shape 3, its base times its height. Shape 1, we said, had a base of 49 pi, and the height of 1 is 11. Shape 2 had a base of 25 pi, and it has a height of 5. Shape 3 has a base of pi, and a height of of 11 plus 5, which is 16. Forty-nine times eleven is five thirty-nine pi. Twenty-five times five is a hundred and twenty-five pi, and then minus sixteen pi. You add those together, you're gonna to get six forty-eight pi, and this is cubic centimeters. There you go. <laughs> Number 12. This one has a cutout again. So we are cutting out this part here. So we got to take the volume of a cone, the big cone, then subtract the volume of the smaller cone. So the volume of this figure is going to be the volume of cone 1 minus the volume of cone 2. To find the base of cone 1, it's pi r squared. r, it's not labeled very well. It looks like it's 5 from here to here, and it's 1 more from here to here. So it looks like that's going to be 6. 
it's 36 pi is the first base. The second base looks like it has a radius of 5. So that's pi r squared. That's pi times 5 squared. That's 25 pi. So once we have the area of each of these bases, this big circle and the small circle, then we can find the volume of the figure. That's going to be the volume of the first cone minus the volume of the second cone. And the formula for the volume of a cone is one-third the area of the base times the height. So the bigger cone had a base of 36 pi and a height of 16. The smaller cone had a base of 25 pi and a height of 9. A third of 36 is 12. And then 12 times 16 is 192 times pi. And over here, a third of 9 is 3. So we got 3 times 25 pi. 3 times 25 is 75. 192 minus 75 is 117. Make that a little bit nicer. So this volume is 117 pi cubic centimeters. Last one, 13. This is a complicated base. Notice that this composite shape isn't really a shape that we that we understand well. I mean, this is the volume of a prism. So yeah, let's use that as our as our driving force. This is a prism. Well, it's kind of a prism. Yeah, let's call it a prism. To find this volume, we're going to take the area of the base times the height. The problem is the base is a complicated figure. We have a semicircle, so we just find the area of a circle and cut it in half. We'll call that figure one. We have a rectangle, but notice if I use this entire rectangle, I'll call that shape two, I've used too much, specifically this little tunnel that goes through, I need to get rid of that. Call that shape three. So to find the base, I'm going to have to take the area of shape one plus the area of shape two and subtract the area of shape three. Shape one, that's half the area of a circle. Shape two, that's a rectangle, base times height. Shape 3, that's half the area of a different circle. So the radius of that big shape, the semicircle, the diameter is 1 plus 4 plus 1, which is 6, so that's 3 squared. The rectangle has dimensions 2 by 6. And the tunnel that goes through has a diameter of force as a radius of two. Three squared is nine, so we got nine over two pi plus 12 minus two times two is four. I could simplify that four and make it four divided by two, which is two. I'm just gonna leave it as four over two pi for a moment. Uh, and the reason that I'm going to do that is because I can subtract these. I already have common denominators. 9 over 2 minus 4 over 2 is 5 over 2. So that is the area of the base. If you don't want to write 5 over 2, you could write 2.5. That would be cool as well. So to find the, the volume of this figure, we take the base, which is 5 halves pi plus 12, 
times the height, which is clearly marked 11. If you multiply this together, you're going to get 55 halves pi plus 132. And this is cubic centimeters. I'm going to move this down here. There you go. That concludes the notes. We've got one more section in this chapter. Thanks, y'all.